emailed out, right? Does everyone have the notes? Yep. Um, so yes, uh, I've also got some uh, cool uh, announcement or news myself. Um, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but these mics are pretty cool, you know? <laughs> the speakers, we got some new mics and speakers, so... Um, yeah, the... But I think this is going to help us a lot more, especially with the singing. I, I think the singing was you know, on another level tonight, right? So uh, thank you God for Mike. But I've also got a uh, couple of things that we got printed out. We got the first... We got the first So, um, obviously, uh, we haven't started this, but we're going to start it now, right? So this year, for the rest of the year, anyone who becomes fruitful gets a free I Believe in Miracles t-shirt. Right? I don't know about you, but I want one, but uh, I, haven't earned, I haven't earned it. So, uh, to start it all off, I want to um, bring up the people that have been fruitful so far this year. Um, and uh, can I also ask the people that have been baptized this year to come on this side? And then can I have the, uh, the people that have been fruitful on this side? Can I have you guys come up? So the b baptisms this year... Oh, I thought you said... I thought you said Best Cow got baptized this year, also. Alright, so. Um, a tradition we're going to start in our church, guys, is that if someone be, uh, uh, meets someone, studies the Bible with them, and then becomes a disciple, right? They've been fruitful. And so, what the new Christian will get is a book. Now, all of these guys have gotten their books, except for Kevin, he's going to get it on Sunday. Actually, in that, in that case, have a seat, Kevin, and uh, have a seat. So uh, we'll, we'll have you guys uh, uh, announce on Sunday, so don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll make you guys even more extra special, right? Come on! Um, so anyways, thank you for your participation. But, um, so this Sunday I'll have um, Kevin uh, with a t-shirt, because I haven't brought the book along. And then uh, uh, Pascal with the book, and then they're going to exchange. Pascal's going to give Kevin a book, and then Kevin is going to give uh, Pascal a t-shirt. But, uh, these guys have all gotten the books, uh, but we haven't had our people that have been fruitful the t-shirts. So, uh, I think I'm going to give you this t-shirt. Don't worry if it's the wrong size, we'll correct it afterwards. And, uh, so we're going to have the exchange, right? So you're going to hold it out. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and one, two, when I say three, then you guys go and uh, exchange, right? And then give each other a hug, and then we're all going to be fired up for about two, three seconds, right? Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Take a seat, guys. Take a seat. Take, take a, a seat. Photo. Wait, photo. Oh, yeah. Take a photo. Yes. That is great. Come on. Yes. One, two. Oh, gorgeousness. Oh, we'll, we'll save you guys for then. Cool. All right. The title of our lesson today, guys, is Time to Stop Procrastinating. Nice. All right. Uh, time to Stop Procrastinating. We'll talk a little bit about that, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of a Bible study. <laughs> and we'll see what the Bible talks about in procrastination. Nice. I think it's quite relevant because I think a lot of us are going through exams, right? Or have just come out of exams or are about to go into exams. Yeah. And uh, the question is, what is procrastination? What is procrastination? Well, it's the action of delaying or postponing something. Whoa. No matter the reason or excuse. Oh. <laughs> right? Um, so it's inaction. That's what procrastination is. Wow. I've got a few quotes for you. I hope you get excited about it because I get excited about it when I read it. It says procrastination is like a credit card. Oh. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. Oh. Procrastination is one of the most common and deadliest diseases. And its toll on success and happiness is heavy. Come on, babe. Procrastination is the thief of time. Oh. Year after year, it steals till time is no more. When there's a hill to climb, don't think that waiting will make it smaller. <laughs> right? Climb the hill now. The worst form of procrastination is reading a procrastination quote, feeling the guilt, and not doing anything about it. You know, believe it or not, Jesus is looking for non-procrastinating followers. 
men and women of action. That's what the Bible is filled of. Oh yeah. Um, we take a look at some of the first people, Andrew and Peter. In John chapter 1, verse 35 to 37, the Bible says, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. You know, Jesus knew, or Peter, and, sorry, Andrew, knew what to prioritize. They, pri they prioritized people's salvation over emotional distraction. In John chapter 1, we'll go down to verse 40 to 42. It says, Simon, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John had, what John had said about who had followed Jesus. And who had followed Jesus, sorry. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found him Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. The first thing when he reaches, like, man, this is most important. Let me go and get it out and bring my brother Peter. Peter, And as a result, Peter went on to be the first movement's leader. And both Andrew and Peter went on to change the world. Why? Because they were doers, not procrastinators. Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. It says, As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. You see, they did things at once. I often thought about this and wondered why did these guys do this at once? Maybe, yes, they were not procrastinating people. Part of it as well, when you really think about it, I think Jesus didn't stop. Jesus was like, it's either now or never, buddy. So when I think about it, it says here, he was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. So most likely Jesus was like, hey, come follow me. And he just walked. That's what he did. And that's why these guys were like, man, if we don't go now, <laughs> we're going to miss it. Right? John and James, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 21 to 22, it says, going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat, and their father followed them. We go to Matthew, right? It seems that there seems to be a pattern here. Jesus is going for people that don't procrastinate. In Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 28, it says, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. I mean, right in the middle of work. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Nice. You know, Jesus himself was a man who did things without delay. In Mark chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, it says, when he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat, and the hired man, and followed him. You know, the world today is full of religious people making excuses for why you can't get God's will done using the term, it's not in God's timing. Right? Uh, but what you got to understand is that God is looking for men and women that just go, now is the time, it's a time to do it. I mean, there are more dreams that are killed by three words every single year. And that is, I'll do it. Oh, great. I'll start tomorrow, right? Three words. Well, technically four, but anyways. But think about how many dreams have been killed by people just saying, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start next week. I mean, whether it be weight, whether it be fruits, being a Christian, whether it's just simply getting baptized and being a Christian. You know, I want to lift up Kevin, right? Uh, I know it's a recent example, but last week I preached at midweek. It's like, man, if you're here, nah, 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 you need to get baptized. Came up to me on Friday night. He was like, I'm ready to do it. Right? It's like enough procrastinating. Time to get it done. Um, but you think about how God always wants things to move fast. I know for me, one of the biggest challenges I had a, a challenge I had as a disciple or have had since being a disciple um, was when we were getting ready to come to New Zealand and then we found out that that wasn't happening. And then we started just applying and like I started messaging people. I think I even like started emailing the, you know, the prime minister and the ministry of foreign affairs in Samoa because like my visa was running. I was like, we, we simply knocked down every single door we could. We then, Jen and I even then moved our wedding up a bit uh, to be faster. So that way, hoping that whole, maybe, maybe getting married uh, sooner will get me a visa very soon. So that way I can come to New Zealand.
Zealand and uh, be with the church here to begin with. And then we basically knocked every single door down, but every single door was closed. Yeah. And then when you think about it, um, sometimes you make things happen, but sometimes we go, oh, well, it's not in God's timing. But you won't really know if it's God's timing unless you knock every single door down. True. And sometimes because of our fear, we like to use the excuse of, oh, well, it's not God's timing. No, it's God's timing when He says it's not, actually. It's not God's timing. Like, one thing you'll know about God is that if it's, God, if it's timing, you don't really know. But if it's not His timing, you will absolutely know. Absolutely. Like, He will put His foot down and He will make it very clear. But how right was God? I mean, God uh, was very gracious with Samoa. I mean, now it's, it's just the church is just even more flourishing, especially they just launched their Mercy Farm on Saturday. So I, fo I forwarded the email earlier today before midweek um, about everything that's going on there. So they're cranking and they're loving it. Uh, prayerfully, they'll get another baptism this week. But the Lord is just working, right? Um, but how right was God in all of that? But again, that's God putting his foot down and going, no, we need to send a, you know, a team there right now. You know, Jesus wants men and women who would stop being afraid of what could go wrong rather than what could go right. Point number one. Procrastination is unacceptable to God. Totally understandable, but totally unacceptable. Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 to 62, it says, He said to another man, follow me. But he, said, but he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. You know, God is looking for people to jump into the service, mm. right? Not to jump in to be served. Mm. Like I've said, God is not looking for followers. He's looking for workers. Mm. People that come in and go, I'm here to work. I'm here to baptize. I'm here to save souls. You know, procrastinators always seem to have a valid reason to not do God's will in their lives. Such as, oh, well, you don't understand my family situation. I mean, you hear that a lot, right? I mean, here's a, here's a first man that he's hiding behind the fact that he needs to love his father. Yet we know in Luke chapter 2, verse 48 to 49, that he's valuing, we see Jesus valuing his spiritual father over his earthly father, right? Luke chapter 2, verse 48 to 49, it says, When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? You know, Jesus always chose spirituality over the physical. And he taught others to do the same. And we see the second man comes to do the same thing, right? He goes, Jesus, can I just, can I just go bury my, my father and I'll come back? And Jesus just goes, no, 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 now is the moment. Why? Because Jesus knows that one moment with your family can turn into a lifetime of putting their needs above God's wants for your life. You know, uh, when we were in Samoa, we studied the Bible with this kid. Uh, his name is Mona. A uh, special kid. Uh, we went all the way up to, I think, uh, light and darkness. We got up to the cross. We went up to the church. And he was set to be baptized. And uh, he, had been, he had been severely beaten like twice by his, by his parents. Uh, specifically his dad. Hmm. Dad gave him such a hiding that he, he, that he had marks all over his body in that. And I think at one point as well, he had a, had a bruised eye as well. But I think his dad was trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, because the, the, the police officers there are a lot more strict when it comes to child abuse now. But anyways, he, he decided, no, I'm going to move out. I'm going to live with the brothers. Uh, and I'm going to put God first. And that's what he did. And then, all of a sudden, he gets a call from his dad. His dad goes, I'm really sorry. I've done all these things to you. Da -da -da -da. Could you please come over just one evening? We need to talk this out. And we need to make sure that you leave on good terms. Went that one evening. Never saw him again. You see, Jesus understood. When the time comes for the call, the call is now. So you see, if you don't start now, if you don't make the decision now, you will end up going in the same road and same pattern that you wish you never did. And it kind of helped my heart going, man, God really does work in everyone's life, whether you see it or not. You know, 
There were many people that met Jesus and felt like he was asking them what he was asking them was too much. That they needed more time. Right? I mean, it was in John chapter 6, verse 60. It says, On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. We know in Martha, right? Luke chapter 10. Judas. It's too hard, Jesus. Peter and the apostles in Mark chapter 14, verse 50. The only difference between these guys and the ones mentioned above is that they repented of their procrastination, right? Or in other words, inaction. I don't know if you guys know, but procrastination actually, they say, uh, so I've done some research and they say procrastination actually costs you a lot of money. They say every one point that you decrease by in terms of procrastination or one hour, uh, sorry, you increase by, you have a decrease of about 23,000 New Zealand dollars. So people have actually done research and they say procrastinators actually earn always, basically always learn, uh, earn less income than those who just go out and do it. Wow. And what they discovered is, I don't know how it works, they've done a metric system or something like that, and they found out, man, every one point you increase your procrastination or inaction, you lose about 23,000 New Zealand dollars. So next time when you go to your phone, take a look at your YouTube and go, dang, times that by 10, I've lost about 230,000 New Zealand dollars this year, <laughs> right? So it costs a lot of money, and it costs a lot of life, uh, life as well. I know. In law as well, they say there's also a, a, a crime where you commit with inaction, right? Because inaction is a crime that kills people. I know in 2017, there was this one guy, I forgot his name. Um, it was reported that he was um, sentenced to about life's prison, uh, prison uh, for life because he saw someone drowning and he didn't even do anything about it. Whoa. Right? So it's a serious thing. And that's why Jesus even treats us seriously. Even Jesus himself was a very hard, was given a very hard task by God. Right? In Luke chapter 9, verse 51. We see that Jesus was, set, was given the task of dying on the cross. But, we see in 51, it says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. What does resolutely mean? Well, it means admirably purposeful, determined, and unwavering in manner. You know, he didn't procrastinate or put it off. Nothing and no one was going to stop him from achieving God's purpose. In Luke chapter 13, verse 31 to 33, it says, At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you, he replied. Go that, tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely, no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. You know, you got to ask yourself, what is stopping you from obeying and doing God's will? Like, when will you stop being the victim and start being the victor? I know for me, uh, one of the things when I think about procrastination, um, I always think of uh, my relationship with Millie, right? Um, so I'll never forget, some of you guys may have heard the story, but I actually, uh, I think of all of us in the church, I think I was the one that actually met Millie personally first. Right? And I'll never forget my first encounter with Millie. Like, it was a scary one. <laughs> I think someone had, had upset Millie that day and I rocked it. And she was like going at this dude, like rebuking him. She was like, Sir, you do that again? Like, I don't know what was going on. Just like, she was like looking and she was mad. I'm like, This woman is not to be messed with. And I remember just walking up and just going, Hi there. Yeah, just, I just wanted to know where the room is. And you know, and you, you're like, You just want to get it done and done and then, you know, over with. And I'll never forget, then, then there was this time, because we always have set sharing times and we'll share it around the evening. And then I saw Millie walking down the, you know, the walkway. And then I was just trying to, you know, you know, you know how when you're like, okay, let me just try to avoid this person. And then Kira or maybe Jenna or someone, I forgot who it was, that stopped her. And they were talking. And I remember just walking past and I was like, I hope she doesn't call me out. I hope she doesn't call me out. Right? But it was this idea that I was just like, my inaction, could have led to her not receiving her salvation. And her being stopped by these people, by Jenna and by Kira and by the girls that were there, has now led to her being, you know, being here, being baptized and is a disciple. And amen, she just started dating. But I think about situations like that. It's like, man, our inaction can even cause someone to lose their salvation. 
Whether that be not opening our mouths, not showing up to sharing, or whether that be not showing up when it comes to times of discipling, right? Every week. I think one of the things that we really got to be careful with as a family, guys, is that it's got to be a weekly thing that you have D times with people. Mm. Don't procrastinate and don't allow inaction to kill your faith and the faith of others. You know, procrastinators are victims at heart. They believe that it is unfair to have such high expectations on people and they hate to be pushed. Dang. Right? They view God and His standards as hard. They do not like to be pushed beyond their emotional comfort level. Oh, well, I don't feel good about that. Please, don't, don't. If, if I don't feel good about it, you shouldn't do it. Huh. Right? It's like, guys, you got to understand. One of the things you got to understand about your emotional levels, if you keep retreating to either going to nap, going to sleep, or giving up on a commitment that you said you would, um, and reaching your limit, that limit will always be your limit. Uh -huh. But how to grow and overcome your character weakness or limit is by pushing the limit. Yeah. You know, I know in, uh, in the old movement, they used to, uh, Joe used to tell me stories that they had this saying in the old movement where they go, man, I'd rather burn out than fade away. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, that's radical. But, I, but that's kind of like the idea that you guys got to not, you know, keep going by a limit and stopping them. Yeah. God made you limitless in your potential. Yeah. You know, they value daily emotional happiness over long-term joy and spiritual impact rooted in spiritual denial. They are afraid of what more God will ask of them if they change. And we find that in Matthew 25, verse 25. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves here, right? We, we all have procrastinated at some point or some level, right? Um, I mean, think about it. When was the last time you were asked to do something and the reason you didn't do it was you were too busy, right? When in reality, you had time to do it, but your heart wasn't in it. Or you were too tired, right? Or you used the fact that you didn't, you know, you didn't know what to do. Or you tried. I tried everything. Did you really? Wow. You know, did you really? Okay. I forgot. When really, <laughs> what happened is you didn't write it down, right? Or it wasn't important to you. I know uh, my wife has to remind me of that. Uh, anyways, but uh, sometimes I'm like, man, because I, I, I can forget things. But again, what you remember is what's important to you. Come on, babe. You know, maybe you can add a few more of your favorite excuses here. <laughs> and I'm sure the list is endless. Right? But the vocabulary of people that are doers and overcomers is very different. Right? I did not have the time instead of, I did not make the time and I will do it now. Amen. I was too tired instead of, I did not push myself hard enough, it won't happen again. Wow. I did not have everything I needed to get started instead of I will get whatever help I need and figure it out. Wow. I will start tomorrow because I will be more refreshed, motivated instead of it will be the first thing I do. Wow. I am too busy instead of I will reprioritize re and make it happen. I am overwhelmed instead of I will pray, make a plan and know that God will grant me a victory. Wow. Um, I know for me when I was studying, procrastination was just exposed within my character. And uh, if you're studying, really value the fact that you're studying because one of the great things about studying is it exposes a lot of your weaknesses. Yeah. Um, and how can you deal with your weaknesses if you don't see them, right? Yeah. I know uh, in Sydney when we were training the Young Prophets group and Aaron and I were in it, I remember Joe sat us down and he goes, you know what's so great about you, Aaron? Is that your sin is out there and it's obvious. Really? I'm like, why is that so good? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I can see your sin clearly. Clearly, it just comes before you. <laughs> I was like, why is that a good thing? And he goes, for these guys, it's hard to see their sin. So it's hard to really help them change. But for you, it's easy. And that's the same thing for our characters. When it gets exposed, when who we truly are comes out, we can be able to deal with it. Right? And I know for me, uh, one of the things... Uh, um, that still kills me today, which is why I kind of had to learn, okay, I need to stop procrastinating, I just need to stop in action, and I need to do things ASAP. Um, when I was in Sydney and I was studying uh, civil engineering and I was finishing off my last year, my final, my final semester, I had one course I had to pass. 
crazy enough, I stayed, like, I stayed up for like three whole, or maybe two whole nights, just trying to crank this, and, and, and this was me like being super focused. It was a very hard course, uh, but I've never gone through a, a period of studying that I didn't even look at my phone once. And I remember I was just like working, 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 and then I submitted it. In the morning, uh, my tutor texted me back and said, hey, you still failed. Oh my goodness. And, uh, and then uh, she said, hey, can you do this? And so I did it. Um, and then send it in, I think it'll be fine. And then when I sent it in, I started to kind of relax and go, I think that should be okay. Right, and then relaxing turned into napping on a chair, turned into actually sleeping that whole day. 30 minutes after I took a nap, I received a message from my tutor, it goes, it's still not good, but I just want you to write this one line, right? and I'll make sure that you pass. Because he saw how hard I was working, like I wasn't even messing around with this course, it was just super difficult. Um, and then I woke up like five hours later, got that text, I emailed them back immediately. I was like, please, please give me a chance, can I get, go, sorry. If you had sent in that one line, I would have had you pass. Damn. And that one course, made me delay my whole, <laughs> my whole degree for six months. Wow. You see, inaction actually only costs you more time. Mm. It doesn't give you more time, it costs you time and what God wants to do in your life. Mm. Well, point number two, well, what's the solution? How do I stop procrastinating? I'm glad you've asked. Mm. Firstly, you gotta see procrastination for what it really is. Mm. It is sin, right? Mm. James chapter four, verse 17, it says, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Wow. So if you know you need to be studying and you don't, it is sin. Amen? Um, the reason why most people don't repent or change let's be, from their sin is because they don't really see that it is sin. Wow. I mean, that's why the world don't, doesn't change it, right? They don't see this procrastination thing as it's not that bad. Um, we live in a world where people love procrastinating and even see it as a normal thing. I mean, don't we see that on like uh, social media or even Facebook or Instagram? It's like, oh, it's the all-nighters for me, you know? <laughs> you know, they take a photo, it's like, it's that coffee for the all-nighters, let's go, you know? It's just like, we glorify it. It's like, guys, it's not a good thing. It can damage you, right? Sin will destroy yours and other people's lives. Yeah. We often think, I think one of the things that we often think of as disciples is we often think the sin of omission is not that bad when compared to sin of commission. Actually, sometimes the sin of omission is more deadly than the sin of commission. In Proverbs 18 verse 9 it says, One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. So when you are slack in your work, not only do you destroy yourself, you destroy other people around you. You know, my encouragement, uh, just simply from this passage is this. Guys, we need to get back to making disciples. When it comes to sh sharing times, everyone needs to be out there, mm. right? Not, not just the leader and the co-leader and a couple of other fired up people. No, everyone needs to be there. Right. Why? Because our inaction will, will either make us worse and make other people worse. When I think about, um, you know, the sin of omission, I think about marriages, right? Most marriages fail, not because of the things you do, but with, because of the things you don't do. That's true. Mm. I mean, no one goes into marriage thinking, Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm ready to destroy my marriage, <laughs> right? I'm going to commit something that's going to end it right here and now. No, it's the things that you don't do. Right. Right, like not hanging your towel in the right place. Amen, honey? <laughs> but even when you think about school, right? Even when you think about school, it's the things that you don't do that make you fail. Not things that you do do. You know, secondly, doing things quickly is the heart of God. We see in Luke chapter 18, God answers prayers quickly, Ooh. right? In Matthew 20, Mark 1, Luke 18, Matthew 21, Jesus made ha things happen immediately. Yeah. Jesus expected his disciples to act quickly in Matthew 28. God expects us to deal with our sins quickly. In Matthew chapter 5, Acts chapter 12, Jesus commends those who do things quickly in Matthew 25. There was an urgency in the early church to do things quickly. So it's a hallmark of a disciple. Wow. That when we are given a task, given a challenge, given an opportunity to act, we act right there and then. Third, you got to understand, 
is that you don't have time. Yep. Right? In yep. Psalms 90, verse 12, it says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Wow. You know, even in psychology, they say the same thing. It says, for those of you who, you, who, who are young, procrastination actually costs you more money than those of you who are old. Right? So I don't mean this in a mean way, but... Um, Tiffany's procrastination is actually worse than Ian's procrastination because he's got less years, you know, amen, uh, to live. I don't mean that in a mean way, I just like, but that's the reality, right? It's a fact. But they say, and, and that really goes against what we think as young people because sometimes when we're young, we're like, yeah, I've got time, yeah, I can. No, it's like now is the time to act. Um, you know, you got to understand that you don't have time. I mean, when you think about it, um, when you're a parent, I mean, this is basically the only influence you have on your child until they're 18 and then that's it. When you're single, do something powerful as a single. Enjoy your singlehood. And when you're married, you know, you're soon going to have kids and then that's about it, right? Um, it's gonna, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight to have time, right? Make time, right? Um, so you don't have time. And once you understand that, you'll be, you, you think a lot more wiser going, yeah, it's, I don't have enough time. I need to make the most of it. Fourth, uh, you got to destroy the demonic lying victim thoughts like, I can't help it. All right? My emotions just become overwhelming. Yeah. I feel demotivated or I suck or I am stuck. Right? <laughs> When I try to make other, other, you know, when I try, other people make me feel small, stupid, guilty. You know, I've tried everything, but it's no good. You know, you can go on and on and on. I think, to be honest, the root of procrastination is sometimes fear, not laziness. Yeah. But you got to understand, as a Christian, there should be nothing that you fear. Yeah. Right? Um, as a Christian, it's actually one of the greatest achievements you can ever make. Mm. Being a disciple and staying a disciple. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, what has helped me? Well, here are some suggestions that has helped me. Number one, a weekly hour schedule. Please, I cannot stress enough. You need to have an hour by hour schedule, right? You need to know the time you have free and fill it up before the week starts and then as you go along. So for me, I always have a diary that I buy and I make sure that every hour is filled up. And if it's not filled up, I schedule Bible studies around it. You got to have a do it list. The things that you want to achieve and then have a daily do it list. Look at it three times a day. Prioritize it from one to ten. Nice. You know, drive yourself through a daily do it list. And then you got to have accountability. I know one of the great things about the kingdom is we have accountability everywhere. Yeah. When we say it, guess what? People are going to hold us accountable to it. Yeah. So I know, uh, you know, uh, the brother's household in Ponsonby have uh, been working and uh, are great at repenting from waking up late to waking up early. Amen? Uh, but I, I know I was talking with Dante and uh, he was seeking advice on how to help. And I was just like, it's very simple. Have you guys agreed that they're going to wake up at 6? It's like, yeah, this brother, this, yeah, this brother, this brother, yeah. Sweet. All right. That means you have the authority to kick them out of bed. Nice. Yeah, that's literally what you got to do. I was like, if you said it, we agreed on it. I know in our old brother's household, that's what we did. Like, if we said, I wake up at 6, I get up, I just turn the light on, right on. And they get mad. It's like, bro, we agreed that you're going to wake up at 6. It's like, I don't mean to be mean. I'm just trying to help you be godly, right? It's like, okay, okay. You know, and then they go pray. But that's what, uh, that's the power of accountability, you know? And the power of having people around you. Um, you know, you got to have work groups, whether it's set evangelism. The purpose of set evangelism is this. When you don't feel like evangelizing, the group will encourage you to evangelize, right? So the, the most work that you got to do is you got to just actually show up. Set follow-up, ICCM, study groups, right? And then you got to make it fun, right? Have fun doing it. I think uh, we always have to be reminded to have fun. <laughs> um, I know uh, uh, for Joe, he always tells me stories, but one of the things he does with his workout is he cycles towards, uh, so I've lived with him, and what he does is he has his room where he works out, he has his TV up in, 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 a, in a wall, and he cycles and he's watching documentaries. So he's having fun while sweating and killing himself, right? Um, video game follow-up. I, I think um, that's what 
uh, we used to do in Sydney as well is that sometimes we'd get together, play a video game. It's like, okay, all right, the next person to book a Bible study is going to be next, right? All right, let's set up a Bible study. All right, five minutes. All right, next 15 minutes, let's set up a Bible study. Just making it fun. You know, creating processes that avoid procrastination um, to get fruit. Evangelism, right? Meet to get number. So, just to help you guys uh, again when it comes to evangelism, evangelism is very simple. You just go up, go, hey, would you like to come to church? Would you like to study the Bible? Cool. All right. Um, would you like to connect? Can I get your number? You get their number. Ten minutes later, what you got to do? You got to text them. Hey, so grateful for the conversation. Thank you for the time. I look forward to meeting you. Da, 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 da. Right? And if they text back, then that's a great relationship to build. Nice. Right? And then lastly, uh, so after you know creating processes that help you avoid procrastination, you got to always say yes to more responsibility to change your character. Right, you gotta ask for more, right? Do more. So I appreciate the, our deacons in training group, right? Um, so after the encouraging visit that uh, um, Joe and Kerry um, uh, uh, came to last week, we came to a conclusion that the deacons just wanted to do more, right? Chris was like, "Give me more. Give me the resumes. I'll get the jobs for you, right?" Mariah's right? like, hey, "Give me kids, give them. Give me someone that I need to disciple that I can help nurture to be strong." And he and Margaret were like, "Yeah." Give us more, and then uh, I think I've been. I think this is the most I've ever called Ian in the past like three days. I was just like, "Hey, can you get this? Can you do this? Can you do this?" Right? And uh, I don't know if he's uh, been tired, but he, you know he can't complain because then I'll bring it up. Hey, you asked for more, right? Uh, but no, I'm just messing. I'm just messing around. But um, but you know you gotta ask for more to change your character. You know. For me, even when I started to, to lead a church uh, back in Samoa, I never knew how to do a budget. And here I was, handling the budget for the whole church. I mean, that was both concerning and it was convicting as well. Because it's the Lord that helped me make a budget, amen? I never knew how to do admin work for the church, but I was like, give it to me, you know? Um, I remember even uh, Monica used to make a, make, a, make a joke about it. I was like, man, you're a goofball. How are you even leading this church? And I'm like, I don't know. It's the Lord. Right? I just ask for more. I get it. And I work according to it. And it really helped me grow my character. And to the point where when I actually went to work, um, and I worked in the field for a bit to be a civil engineer, um, they were supposed to pay me very minimal wage, and I was an intern. Um, but it got to the point where even my boss was surprised because I was like, I was so used to being a disciple, right? It's just like, give me more, give me more. What can I do? What can I do? Oh, and so after every little task I did, it's like, what can I do? What can I do? So I went from sweeping the rooms to, you know, wiping the tables to cleaning the dishes to then going on to doing proper projects, <laughs> you know? I went out and supervised things. I, I started using like apps. I had no idea what it was. And uh, my boss was actually quite surprised because I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now teach me. I, I, can, I can learn fast. And I did it, I did it, I learned it overnight. And then at the end of it, they just started um, giving me more and more responsibilities, responsibilities that I shouldn't have done. And on top of that, they ended up more than doubling my pay salary, um, which as an intern was unthinkable. Um, I won't say it here because in Samoa it's unthinkable, but here it's like peanuts. But anyways, um, but it made me really grow. And I, you know, I got a promotion after promotion because of that. And that's the same thing that we've got to understand, guys. It's like you've got to not shy away from responsibility. Yes. Take it on. If you're overwhelmed, ask the person next to you, how do I do it? How do I stop procrastinating? And how do I master it? Um, in conclusion, uh, on Sunday, guys, I'm gonna, I've been, I wanted to give it out tonight, but I thought, no, let me pray about it one more time. Uh, but I'm praying over the calendar. If you guys go on your, uh, on your 2023 Auckland, you see that I've fixed up the calendar. And then secondly as well, we also have our double for Tonga and Wellington uh, stat sheets that we're going to use tonight. So tonight, when you split it up into your Bible talk groups, I want you to take the stat sheets out and look at it. So on the top, we have Nixon and Sarah uh, with 12 members. They had 11, but now the goal is you need to grow to 22. Then we have the Contro, and when, then we have the goal to double that Contro uh, by the end of the year. Um, the goal is we need to get to 60 to send out Tonga or Wellington. But we never, we, we never know. It might be Dunedin. It might be Christchurch, right? It might be to a location that you, you call home. Um, so I want you guys to, to take that out and use that for Bible Talk tonight.
And I want you to put it in the Bible studies, and I want you to talk as a group and go, who do we have studying the Bible? How can we double our Bible talk? And also, how could we double our contribution? How could we help each other? Does that make sense? The title of our lesson is time to stop procrastinating. Right? Time to stop uh, with inaction. Point number one, procrastination is unacceptable to God. God is looking for people that go, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it now. Now, if you're here and you're studying the Bible, make the decision to go, now is the time I'm going to get baptized. Right? And point number two, solution. Well, how do I stop procrastinating? I hope those practicals really help you to see that you can do more, you can take on more, and you can be more. And that's our lesson for tonight.